Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to ask you to turn your Bibles, please, to Matthew chapter 27. And we'll be covering verses 15 through, uh, let me see here, 26. Praise God. Amen. Amen. 15 to 26. And today's message is, who have you chosen, Jesus or Barabbas? Who have you chosen, Jesus or Barabbas? We know um, this is considered Holy Week, the week before the crucifixion of Christ. Amen. The, the week before the resurrection of Christ. And... Um, a lot of things is going on. We heard a lot of stories and different things. And today I want to go in a different direction. Um, and I want us to really look at who truly Barabbas really represents. Praise God. Because we need to know the story and gives us a better insight on how God had ordained um, his divine plan of, of redemption through his son. For mankind. Amen. Amen. In verse 15 of Matthew 27, praise God, reads, praise God. And at that feast, the governor, which was Pontius Pilate, he was a Gentile governor, was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would, during the Passover, he would. It was traditional that he would release a prisoner who was on death row. And they had a noble prisoner called Barabbas, the people. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Paul said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ. For he knew that they envied they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? And he was being warned. Mm -hmm. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they took they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. So he was more uh, uh, persuaded, Pilate, to listen to the crowd than listen to his own wife. Pilate said, praise God. No, I'm sorry, verse 21. The governor ans answered and said unto them, Whether of thy twine will ye that I release unto you? They said, Look. We want Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. Now these were the same people who when he came into the town on a donkey into Jerusalem, amen, who they said, Hail Hosanna. Blessed be the name. Our king. Same ones were saying, now they're saying, crucify him. And the governor said, why, what evil have he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. So they really didn't know. You know, he, was, uh, he wasn't guilty. And they still just, just crucify him anyway. Jesus. When Paul saw that he could prevailed nothing but that rather a tumult was made he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying I'm innocent of the blood of this just man of this just person see ye to it so because he wiped his hands and cleaned his hands doesn't mean he wasn't guilty yeah, right, right. he had a, maybe a peace of mind but he was just as guilty as the rest of them mm -hmm. amen. amen then answered all the people and said his, now this is ironic listen to what he says here then he answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and all our children. His blood be on us and all our children. They didn't even really understand what they were even saying. Behold the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. 
Jesus atoned us and covered us with his blood. Amen. When the Father sees us, he sees us covered in his son's blood. Meaning that we were forgiven. Amen. Amen. Watch this last verse. Then release he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scorned Jesus, when they had scorned Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers took Jesus and they put a, made a thorn, a, 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 a crown of thorns on his head. Actually slamming on his head, they put a purple robe on him. They beat him, they spit on him, and they punched him several times. Jesus. Amen. And we all know how they mocked him and everything. But we need to look a little closer here who Barabbas was. Amen. Look at who Barabbas was. He was a prisoner in jail for... For insurrection, which means a revolt. He murdered someone in the crowd because actually he was he wasn't as bad as you know it picks him out to be. He was a rebel. He was going up against the government. Amen. He was going up against the government because Herod had actually put a an image of an eagle on the temple. And that was considered a, an abomination. So him and the other couple of Jews, they were upset that what the government was doing. So they was going against the, the Roman government. And see, realize something. The people at that time, they were looking for a, a, a Messiah, a, a, a warrior, someone who would fight for them. Amen? This is important. Now the word, the name Barabbas means, uh, a bar means son. Barabbas, will we get Abba, father? It means father. So Barabbas actually means, his, his first name was uh, 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 um, Joshua or Jesus. Amen? So it was Jesus or Joshua the uh, uh, Barabbas. Amen? Praise God. And you look at that. So here you see the picture of Jesus who was the son of God and almost... Uh, uh, Barabbas, who was the son of the father. Amen. But they chose the wrong father. Amen. But we're going to find out they chose the right one. Amen. Pay attention. Amen. He was just a common criminal. He killed someone in a riot. Amen. He was seen as a messiah or a warrior to the people. Amen. Because they were looking for somebody to overthrow Rome. So Barabbas kind of fit that, 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 that description. Plus Barabbas, it was, he really was a deception. See, the devil uses, watch this, the devil uses deception. He's not going to tempt us with something good. He's going to tempt us with something that looks good. I mean, not evil. He's going to tempt us with something that looks good. Amen. So he puts us in front of us. So now remember, Jesus is the Son of God and Barabbas is the Son of the Father. So he uses deception. He puts something really nice in front of us, and, and, and he, he puts it there because he's, we put something funny that we don't want. He, we ain't going to go after it. That's why in the Bible when it talks about in the end, Jesus is going to separate the wheat and the tare. See? They kind of look alike. See? The wheat were the real and true believers, and the tares were the false ones. But only the Lord knows the difference. Right. See, a lot of times when Satan tempts us with with uh, 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 things that are good, but ain't really good for us. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. He's good. He's, he's a good God. Amen. Now, let's look at those two thieves who was on the cross. Of them. It was customary that a, 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 a thief wouldn't be even crucified. Crucifixion was only really for people who really did horrendous crimes. If you was a thief, they'd just cut your hand off wow. or cut your foot off. But they wouldn't crucify him. And here Jesus didn't do anything. But they crucified him. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Mm, God is good, y'all. Christ's death is by far the most important event in human history. He committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. He was the only uh, sinless individual who ever lived. Christ's death was God's plan of redemption. Listen. Christ's death was God's plan of redemption. Amen. Christ's death died willingly. He willingly went to the cross for us, becoming atonement for the sins of everyone, even those who actually killed him that day.
He was, he was the greatest sacrifice ever made. Praise God. Thank you. Let's look at some of the injustice of his crucifixion. His torment, listen, his torment and punishment he suffered on, on his death was the worst ever. Now, we ain't really got to go into it because we heard it so many times. That was one of the worst ways to die, crucifixion. Jesus. Worst ways to die. Anyone talks about when if someone was, on a, was on, on, a, on a cross and being crucified, they would break their legs. Amen. But they couldn't break his legs. Amen. Because it, it was all prophesied. Christ had to do this. He came to do this. Amen. And all the ways that they, they, he suffered, and he suffered uh, uh, worse than anybody ever did for mankind. Amen. And he was guilty of nothing. He was guilty of nothing. His death was the worst miscarriage of human justice in the history of the world, but the crucifixion of Christ, listen, was also the greatest act of divine justice ever carried out. Look at Acts chapter 2, please. Acts chapter 2. It was the greatest uh, uh, injustice, praise God, divine justice ever carried out. Acts chapter 2, we look at the day of Pentecost, and what was going on here, um, praise God, the Holy Ghost was given the day of Pentecost. And here, Peter was trying to explain to them in verse 22, because they was talking about, this man must be drunk. The people must be drunk because they received the Spirit, amen, and they heard him speaking in their own language, not an unknown language, their own language. The purpose of that was they were all able to communicate, amen, to get the gospel throughout the world, amen. But they went on to say, well, these people, must, all of them must be drunk. They all must be drunk, amen. But here Peter kind of explains them in verse 22 of that John chapter 2. He says, listen, Acts, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 2, I'm sorry. Amen. Look at verse 20, 22, 22 to 24. Look what it says here, praise God. He says, Ye men of Israel, hear ye the words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. See, he was delivered by the foreknowledge of God. Amen. So God ordained this whole process. Amen. He ordained the whole process. And it goes on to say, Ye have taken and by, by the wicked hands have crucified and slain him, praise God, whom God have raised up and have loosed, praise God, amen, have loosed the pain of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. So God had ordained the whole process of Christ going to the cross. Now it was it's ironic as you look at Barabbas, and Barabbas knew he was guilty after they took his the, the shackles off his ankles and his and his hands. He probably looked at Jesus, and Jesus probably looked at him. But Jesus probably looked at him like to say, "It's all right. It's all right." I know you did what you did, and I know I didn't commit this crime. And Jesus probably spoke within himself to the Father, I got it. I'm going to carry out your will that you want me to do. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we we got to look here and understand that the whole time that this was going on, God was in control. God was in control. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53, praise God. And I want us to see here how all this was part of God's plan. Amen. 53, 10, and 11. Watch this. Praise God. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord that his son would be bruised. See, we got to go way back into the book of Genesis. Uh, three, when it talks about uh, when when uh, he said to the serpent, he said, "He shall crush your kingdom, but you shall bruise his heel." See, Jesus was 
being prophesied back then that he was going to die for the sins of the world. So the Lord was, the, God was consistent when he says here, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Listen, he had put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Behold the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Look at verse 11. He shall see the travail of his soul. You see that? Travail of his soul, praise God, or the anguish of his soul, and shall be satisfied. Wow. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Praise God. His righteous servant shall justify many. We were justified by the blood of Christ. All right? Amen? For he shall bear their iniquities. He shall bear their iniquities. So this was God's whole plan for mankind. To die for the sins of the world, praise God. Hallelujah. His murder, the murder of Jesus was a, it was a, a vast uh, conspiracy. The Rome, the Romans... The Sanhedrins, amen. That was the Roman Council of 70. The people of Israel, the Jewish people, and also the Gentiles. So who killed Jesus? God himself did. Amen. God himself did, amen. John, you know, we read there in that John chapter 18 when he says to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. It's not of this world. He said, you call yourself a king? He said, my kingdom's not of this world. If it were so, I would be rescued. But I came to do this very thing that you were about to do. That I'm going to allow. And Pilate said to him, well, you know who I am? I have authority to crucify. But Jesus told him, let me tell you something. <laughs> if my father does not give you authority, you can't do nothing to me. And that's important to all of us, y'all. It's important that God himself, when God told uh, uh, the serpent, the devil, and Job, have you considered my servant Job? Mm -hmm. And just when we're going through things, God knows our walk and he knows our heart and he knows our situations. He said to the enemy, you, the enemy wants to, he wants, if he could go right at us with his own will, he would do it. But he has to get permission from Almighty God. So when you're going through things in your life, let me tell you something. You are not alone. God is always with you. He's always there to protect you. Don't think that you're out there all by yourself and all what you're going through, that God don't know nothing about it. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter, I mean 1 Peter chapter 4, don't think it's strange. The Bible tells us in James uh, chapter 1, uh, um, he said, blessed when you fall into diverse temptations. So don't get all bent out of shape when you're going through stuff. This is part of God's pruning process. This is part of God's process of actually making us and getting us the Bible says Jesus suffered. Listen, he experienced, he, experienced, he learned obedience for the things that he suffered. Amen. So as we follow Christ, we're going to suffer some things. But we're only going to suffer for a little while, according to 1 Peter chapter 5. We're only going to suffer a little while. Amen. So Jesus suffered for us. He went through some hard, hard times for us. Amen. But thank God that he did because the penalty of sin was what? Is death. Amen. He took away the sins on the, on the whole world at the time, present, and in the future, and beyond. Amen. He died for everybody's sin. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus told his disciples many times that he was going to die. Throughout the book of John, the Mark, and one, one we want to look at here in um, Matthew chapter 16, he told his disciples, and we know that story about what Peter, Peter said, man, nah, you ain't got to go through this. But Jesus told him, this is why I came. I came to do this very thing. Amen. I came to do this very thing. In that Matthew chapter 16, you see here in verse, hallelujah, look at verse, uh, let's look at verse 20. Amen. He says, then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was, was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples, listen, how that he must go unto Jerusalem 
and suffer many things of the elders of the chief priests and scribes, listen, and be killed, this is important, and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it not far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest unto the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So yeah, Peter didn't want him to die, but he didn't understand the whole plan. Amen? See, Jesus had to die for our sins. And see, throughout this whole thing, you've got to realize what's actually going on. God is letting us know that nothing happens by chance. Amen? We, are, we have been predestined. Yes. God is all-knowing. Amen. Amen. People say, well, wonder how it happened. God knew what was going to happen because it was part of his whole plan. Yes. Bible tells us in Ezekiel chapter, I mean, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, it says, God has placed eternity in man's heart. Only God is an appointed time for that thing to come about. But only God has placed that plan and purpose in a person's heart. So only God knows our, our destination. Amen. Praise God. But it's important that we understand, see, when we know God, God gives us insight of his plan. We as true believers know, praise God, that Christ died for our sins. So we ought not to get all bent out of shape that we know we have a Savior. And that ought to give us faith and understand and build our faith that we are sinners saved by grace. We are sinners saved by grace. But see, one of the biggest problems here um, with the people when they said crucify him, we want Barabbas. Think about it. Who really was this Barabbas? Amen. Yeah, he was a murderer. He was a rebel. Amen. But you look at it real closely. In reality, Barabbas was you and me. That's why Jesus, when they, when they said, give us Barabbas, he didn't get upset. Because he came to die for us. You see? And see what happened, this was, now uh, Barabbas was Jewish. And even today, they don't believe in Jesus. Amen. And you think about it, in reality, he was us. Because the Bible tells us, oh, this is fantastic, y'all. Look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Amen. It says here, watch this. He says, 10.1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is, listen, that ye might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. What was this righteousness? That Christ would die for your sins. See? But Israel, the Jewish nation, they were like, no. <laughs> you know, no. Just like Barabbas during this time, these Jews, they went, about to, they went about to establish their own righteousness. They want to do it their way. But you don't have to do it your way. You can't save yourself. I can't save myself. Christ has to save us. All we got to do is accept what he has done. Right. Amen. Amen? Watch this, watch this. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So Barabbas actually represented us. But we as true believers realize that, this, yeah, we accept what Christ has done for us. We sinners, like Barabbas, but Christ, who was sinless, amen, didn't commit no crime, amen, but we accept his sacrifice. But it's so sad today that a group of people, listen, don't believe in this Jesus, amen, they don't believe in this Jesus, and they're going about to establish uh, on their own what they think, how they ought to be righteous. There's none not righteous. There's none not righteous, amen? Praise God. None of us are righteous. Listen, mm, God is good. But while we were still sinners, listen, Christ died for us. We were still, still sinners, but Christ died for us. Praise God. We can't save ourselves, y'all. No, we, can't. we can't save ourselves. Now, see, you know, Easter's next week. This is Holy Week. And you hear some of the same old stories. But this particular thing, as I was reading it, 
how Barabbas kind of, he, he represents us. Because we go going about people out here trying to do their own thing. You know, they're trying to make it to heaven their own way. Look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. They're going about trying to establish their own righteousness. But it's, it's not going to work. We got to just give it to Jesus. Yeah. Give it to Jesus. We're saved by grace through faith. Man can't save himself. Amen. Look at 15. John 3, 15. Let's start there. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. Well, we know 16. It says, For God so loved the world, listen, that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Watch. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It's so funny when people, you start talking about Jesus to people. People get all bent out of shape. They want to stop the conversation. They want to walk away. Because they, they say to themselves, I don't want to hear this Jesus stuff. They ought to tell you something right there. They, are, they're, they haven't really realized what Christ has done. Amen? Amen? Let's finish reading here. Hallelujah. Watch this. He says, Mm. Hallelujah. Look at 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Watch this, y'all. 19. That light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. That's why a lot of times when you try to witness to people, they don't want to hear it. Because in their heart, their deed is evil. And see, we don't send these individuals because Christ died for them too. Yes. Our job is to plant seed, listen, and to water. We don't give the increase. That's our responsibility. Our responsibility is to, listen, is to plant a seed, and then someone come along or we used as water in the seed. Amen? But we don't save nobody. Right. Only the power of God's Spirit can save somebody. But when you come across folk, you know, I used to say, well, man, how come you don't want to accept this Jesus? And I found myself, you know, before, not anymore, in an argument. But now I look back and say, Lord, have mercy on them. They know not what they do. You know? Because they don't really understand that when he says here, I'll read it again. Praise God. Look at that verse again. He that believeth on him, 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Jesus. You see that? But because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. For this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Look at the next verse. This is powerful. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Y'all watch this. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. This is the reason why Christ has to be lifted up. This is the reason why the truth must be told. Amen. This is why our light has to shine. This is the reason why people who previously knew us, amen, before we came into the church, when we, listen, when they see us after we came into the church, amen, they ought to see a difference. It ought to be some kind of change, amen. So we're in, we in a process, amen, of elimination. You know, we sin, but we can become sinless. And see, our greatest responsibility is to lift up Jesus. Because it's the Jesus in us that makes us who we are today, amen. We are dying to ourselves. Amen. Though our outward man perish, our inward man should be renewed day by day. And it only takes place, only takes place when our spirit is being cultivated by the word of God. By the word of God. And I used to look at this story like Barabbas was, man, how could they choose him? Well, think about it. How could God choose us? Think about that. You know, 
We was worthy for hell. But he died for the sins of the world. Amen? Amen. So when Barabbas came off those, that podium and took the shackles off his hand, he looked at Jesus. He just looked at him. He didn't, it's no recording nowhere. He says, well, thank you, Jesus. He didn't care. And that's how man is today. He don't care. This Bible, these scriptures we look at today, plainly tells us how Jesus, amen, prophesied that he would come and he would die. People say they know the Bible and don't know what's in the Bible. How he will come and save the world, amen, and he would deliver them. All we got to do is accept his sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For who shall believe shall not perish, but I will have seen life. This is why it's so important in churches today that ministers, people who preach, watch this, this is powerful. People who preach the word of God, amen, must preach of the spirit of the word of God. Now what do I mean by that? Now, what I mean by that is that so many people, we are emotional creatures. Watch this, we're emotional. We get emotional. That's part of our makeup. But, see, when, when all that's settled down and going out the way, when you got to get to the nitty-gritty, you can't live on your emotions. We got to live by fact. And only God can give us fact of something. Jesus. Amen? Amen. Because, you know, I've seen, and I've been in situations where people have got so emotionally charged up by a message. Watch this. But when the dust settles, was there anything that took place to let you know what you heard was from God? Come on, somebody. Some people could not sit in a, 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 through a message like this today if, if they wasn't involved. Come on now. If they were not involved some kind of way physically or emotionally. Amen. And this is the truth. Watch this. You've seen situations and messages that's being delivered. And every five seconds, the people up and they down. Appreciate it. Now, y'all can sit down now. But then again, over here, he uses something else to, to get them right back on their feet again. Then he tells them to sit down. Y'all can sit down again. Then uh, two minutes later, they're back up again. Now, I understand what I'm saying when, I'm, when, I, when I say this. Is that the Bible says you know them by the fruits. You're known by the fruits. Amen. And there ought to be some kind of change in a person's life. A trying to, some kind of transformation by the fruits that we carry as believers. That's why he said there, look at it, back over here. Look at here in verse 20. He says here, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Lest his deeds should be reproved. Now watch this. But he that doeth truth comes to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. So in other words, when you truly receive Christ, amen, you don't mind to be reproved. You don't mind to be corrected. Amen. Because we know we're sinners. We know we need Christ. We know that faith comes by hearing and we have heard everything. Amen. So we got to keep on hearing, Amen. Praise God. But when we shun away from hearing the true gospel of Jesus Christ and not being hoodwinked by coming to churches and just feeling this emotional charge, but nothing really took place, not really got down deep, amen. And there's plenty of churches out here like that. Yes. There's a spirit of sensationalism that a people who probably don't really know Christ all of a sudden on fire for Christ. That's the same thing. Listen, before this happened with Jesus, amen, when they said crucify him, crucify him, the same people who said it were praising him because they thought that he was the king that they thought they were going to receive to take over Rome. But that wasn't part of his plan. Right. Amen. See? He, the world belongs to him. It wasn't a big thing to take over Rome and give, give it back to them. That wasn't his concern. His concern was saving souls. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. That's why when Mary came along and she anointed Jesus' feet with the oil. 
And Judas got upset because he was a treasurer. He said, you know how much all this cost? How much this thing cost? And you wasting on him? Jesus. See? Because he was all about following Jesus because he wanted a kingdom where he would be in charge. And Jesus would take over. But his heart wasn't right. His heart wasn't right. And so, but telling you, so many people today, I'm telling you, out here, and, and, and I thank God, this only comes from, from experience. It only comes from, you know, I learned a long time ago, <coughs> you're just as good as your last sermon. <laughs> Seriously. People try to emulate a service prior because we had a good time. They say the spirit was moving. But what spirit was moving? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> See, it's, it's the word. It's the power of the word that cleans a person. Jesus said, the words, John 15, the words that I speak clean you. And so when we deviate from the words of God, amen, and the truth of God, Jesus, Jesus was telling them throughout the Gospels that he came to die. So when it came for him at the time to die, listen, look, he won willingly. Then commit no sin, but this is why he came. We were Barabbas. We are sinners. <laughs> but true believers understand, understand that we thank the Lord for laying down his life, for shedding his blood for us on Calvary. We thank him for that. We don't go off and say, yeah, Jesus, I know you died for our sins. Let me go do my thing. I'm making it to heaven the best way I can. Well, you ain't going to make it. Because you can't make it in. Without the bloodshed of Christ and his atonement of his blood, there's no remission of sins. He died laying down his life for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. But there's so many people today, and this is what I'm telling you, all you people who, who uh, we, got, we got a lot of people who go to church. We go to church. And some of you sit in your own suffering. You might have said to some of your friends, well, I don't see no evidence that Christ is in your life. Come on. I don't see no evidence. Amen. You act almost the same way you used to act. And you've been in church for years. But when the word of God comes, and it comes to convict, and it comes to convert, amen, and it, it, it's a transformation that takes place on the inside, people are going to see your fruit. They're going to see a difference. They're going to see a difference. Amen. Remember, we are sinners saved by grace. Because he laid down his life for us. And that was, that was powerful on that day on the cross. When well, he looked up, he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, that was a perfect example of love. Here he is in the garden, didn't do anything. He didn't do nothing. But the hour was coming when he had to die for the sins of the whole world. So to the point that his sweat was like drops of blood. Drops of blood. Think about that. He didn't even do anything. Now, we, you know, us, we know we're guilty. We know we're guilty. But see, what we try to do, a lot of us try to do, we try to hide. We try to hide it. See? We try to hide the things that we have done wrong. And God knows all about it. You see? We try to cover our sins. Adam and Eve did it in the garden when they sinned. Who told you it was naked? Well, look, we cover ourselves because we was naked. Who told you that? See? And man today is covering his sins. But we as true believers don't look, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, you know, I'm, you know I make a mistake. I love the brother's testimony when he came in. He started off, he said, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that, Lord, to allow me to see me. See, this is when the true gospel of Christ is a gospel who allows us to see who we are without Christ. You see? I thank him for going to the cross for me and you. I thank him for it. Because I don't want to be one of those folks who say, okay, like we, we read there in our Romans chapter 10, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They're going about to establish their own righteousness. Amen. Amen. They want to do their own thing. Amen. But we as true believers know, wait a minute, Lord, I know that you have already, you have already paid the price for me. Amen. So all I got to do is believe it. Who shall believe shall not Amen. perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Believe. That's why true 
person of God who delivers the word of God must tell you what the word says. And the only way to tell you what the word says is that God sends them. Amen. And as God is working in them and God is breathing in them and the spirit in you can bear witness because you know the word of God. Amen. amen. And the word of God is in you and you hear it for yourself and you can probably say amen. 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 You can say amen to it. Because the God is in you. You are partakers, and I am partakers of his divine nature. We have a part of God in us. The power of God, his spirit in us. And it helps us recognize all what's going on out here. Amen. It helps us discern and who's who and who's not who. Amen. 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 And so many people are following denominations and following movements, and but not following the spirit of the word of God. The spirit of the spirit of the word of God only God can give. Man can't listen. And this is so sad. And this is one of the things that you know. I you see different denominations, and you it's almost like the people who speak in these denominations almost sound the same. They use the same logo. They use the same uh, mannerisms, mm -hmm. you see. But you look at the Gospels, of Mark, Luke, Matthew, John, they're all different. They're all different. Amen? And just like we all different. Lord will use us, amen, the abilities that he don't know. We don't have no ability. It is God who works in us to do of his good pleasure, you see. And see, not till we get to that point where we surrender all and say, Lord, here I am. Amen. And so the only way we're going to get to that point is God is going to show us who we are. Amen. And only the word of God, the perfect law of liberty, if we continue therein, Amen. then God's going to bless us. Amen. 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 This is why I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because I'm no different from you. Amen. 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 And we're no different from the next person. Amen. The only thing that makes us the difference is the spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Allows us to be who we are. Yeah. You know, just the other day I was coming out of the church and uh, um, I guess the, the, well, the guy was trying to, you know, mock at his girlfriend. And I guess they was arguing. So I came out the door and the first thing he says was, look at this, you right in front of the church. You know, jumping all on her. You know, and you acting like that. Huh. Amen. And he says, Amen. well, Pastor, what time is the service? You know, you want to get cahoots with me. You know, I said, well, we started we started at uh, uh, 9.30. He says, yeah, we're going to be here. You know, I can't tell you how many times somebody's told me that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to be here. Yeah, sure. Amen. Never seen him again. I've never seen him again. All right. But it doesn't bother me. Yeah, all right. Because this is customary what man does. See, man wants to hide his sins. Amen. But we can't cover our sins. Mm -hmm. God knows all about us. Amen. You see? But I told him, I said, look, I'm going to leave this with you, brother. He oh, says, uh, you know, they was asking questions about the service. So I said, you know what? Look at this. I said, I promise you when you come in, I won't point you out. Amen. And the girl immediately said, you know what? That is so true because every time I go into a church, they're always trying to tell me to get them to say something. And I told him, I said, you know, it's not about you saying something. It's about you hearing something. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> you didn't said enough. What you ought to be saying, I can't do this no more. Lord, I need help. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. But uh, my prayers go out to them. Yes, yes. Well, whoever they were, I didn't, we didn't cross any names, but whoever they were, God have mercy on them. Amen. But we got to understand something, y'all, that this was all God's plan. Amen. But Ravis was chosen because he represented, he represented us. Amen. He represents us. We, we committed sins. Mm -hmm. And Christ didn't commit no sin. So he had to die for our sins. Mm -hmm. This is the greatest story that's ever been told. Yeah. And we look at people today even deny that Christ even exists. Amen. But most religions realize that he, he was a person. Mm -hmm. He was on this earth. Amen. We have so much proof that he was here. Yes. Amen. Yes. So much documentation that he was here. And I'm not going to get to this point in my life where I say, you know, this God does not exist. Because I know he exists. Amen. That's why the Bible That's why the Bible says in John chapter 21, when he, I think it's 20 or 21, he told, um, he said to Dalton Thomas, he says, blessed who those, blessed are those who don't see and believe. So I ain't never seen Amen. Jesus, Amen. but I believe that he was here because he's given me evidence that he was here because the spirit on the inside. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. The things I do now and the things I resist now and the way I live my life now could not be done in my own power. It could not be done in your power. The way we forgive people now, praise God, amen, and forget things and go forward in life, amen, and say, Father, forgive them and they know not what they do. That's God. Because there was one time we would took matters in our own hand. Yes, Amen. 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 Wow. But I thank God for his mercy. And you read the Bible. You re I mean, when you read something, these stories mean something. And you can, only, you can only see it by God revealing it to you. You can only see it by God revealing it to you. And I'm going to close with this. Look at John chapter 17. Let's close with that. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Praise God. I want to read verses 1 through 5. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify the Son, and thy Son also may glorify thee, that thou give him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. See that? Watch this. And this is life eternal. This is this eternal life right here. Listen. That they might know thee, the only true God. So this is Satan's greatest deception. He don't want us to know the true God. That's why he's in these churches and he's bringing all, he's He's bringing all, bringing, pulling all the stops out. He's deceiving us left and right. He caused us to believe things and heresies that's not even the word of God because people have become so lazy they haven't seen God themselves. They depend on everything what the preacher says and haven't looked it up themselves and found out what God is really saying. You see? Eternal life is that you may know, listen, praise God, that ye may know the only true God is Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. He says, I have glorified thee on the earth I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Watch this. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thy own self with the glory, watch this, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You hear that? Before the world was. So Jesus was always, amen, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They was always here, amen. We couldn't see God because he's a spirit. So God chose a body. Amen. 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 He chose a body. Amen. And that was Jesus. Jesus. See, Jesus, really, that was just his nickname. Just means Savior. His name was Emmanuel, meaning, listen, God with us. Plain scripture. And see, that's what we really can believe in God. We take the word of God for what it is and stop trying to make it say what we want it to say. And stop looking, stop paying attention to these conspiracy things that's going on. Or these things that have us look at the word of God in a different light because who we are, the color of our skin. And this is important. See, sometimes you gotta, you got to be very wise and intelligent because you're dealing with an enemy. Listen, you're dealing with an enemy. Well, we have to be crafty. And we gotta be, we got to be wise as a serpent. Amen? Because the enemy knows who he is. He knows who he is. But it's still some work for us to do in our home, in our neighborhoods, all around us. Amen? Sometimes we don't have to say things, even though it's truth, we don't have to say them. We pray for them and let God handle the situation because we ain't going to change everybody. Yeah. You can tell somebody that they're wrong, and they might be wrong, but let me tell you something. It don't mean nothing they're wrong. Because their deeds are evil. If God don't come in their life and change them, they're going to still come at you. You see? So we have to be wise. we got to understand some things because I'm telling you, you just can't go and just preach anywhere. See? Now, I'm not going against what the Bible is saying, but you just can't go to certain places unless, unless God really moves you to go there. Unless you really get an unction from God to go do what you got to do, that's a different story. But if some folks are doing things and don't realize some things, amen? God is good, y'all. God is good. He died for our sins. 
Amen. And may God bless you all. Amen. 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 Amen.